It's either bandits, it's either headsmen, kidnappers, and all sorts of vices ongoing. Three years ago, on a platform by a distinguished Nigerian, Daniel Elumba, initially his platform is called the Elumba TV, but has presently been rebranded to be the Newsband TV. On that platform, Nigerians come together on a Zoom link, and we discuss Nigeria as it were. Nigeria as it is, and our expectation for a Nigeria for tomorrow. In that particular meeting, a good number of people are all about the support and believe in the secession. Some believe that a Biafra nation time is not good. Others. Others are of the opinion that the Odudua nation is equally important. In that particular meeting, a good majority of the Nigerians, or should I say a few patriotic Nigerians, believe in what we call a restructured Nigeria. We believe that Nigeria as it is today, the future is bleak. But a restructured Nigeria, but a restructured Nigeria, in the true sense of the word, true federalism, is the way to go to rescue this country. In that meeting, illustrious middle belters were anchored and their guests in the Elumba TV, one of whom is our Reverend Middle Belter, our beloved Dr. Obadea Melafia. May his soul rest in peace. <coughs> On that platform, he said, the Middle Belt is like a bat. When you see a bat, it has a mammalian ears and it has the bird wings. And the bat felt that the bat needed relative and goes around looking for their relative. And the bat visited the bird family and they said, Wow, you have wings like us, but this is your ears. Is not in the genealogy or is not part of our gene. We don't think we can accept you as a relative. He went to the mammals. Yes, you have ears like us. But in our gene or in our history, we don't have wings. So you cannot be our relative. That is the true status of the Middle Belt in Nigeria. In the Middle Belt, in the Middle Belt, we have a significant number of Muslims. Very significant. But they are not accepted in the league of the core north, even in worship. The same Middle Belt, we have a significant number of Christians. But those we worship in the same religion, who are predominantly in the south, would say, well, you worship with us, 
but you are Hausa Fulani. So we continue going in search of relative friends and brothers. When it comes to education, you will find out that as middle betters, we do not enjoy the educational standing like the Yorubas in Nigeria. No, as middle betters, do we have, or we don't seem to have the wealth or business maverick tendencies like our brothers in the Southwest and the South South. Most importantly, we the middle belters are not mainstream in the control of power by our northern brothers, the Irishmans. So, we seem to be like the proverbial bats. With this analogy, it became very clear that for, a, for us as middle belters, we need a restructured Nigeria. And in our discussion on the platform, we realized that you can only have a true federalism in a restructured Nigeria if the man at the head of the presidency, the Mr. President, has the right argument, has the right deep thoughts and belief for a Nigeria to be what it should be. Therefore, with that understanding, the first step we took as part of the Elumba TV discussion sessions was to first tell ourselves who are the true Nigerians. You will not get middle belters anywhere else in planet Earth except where we are today in the middle belt. Igbos, you can find them in UK or wherever, but they are there as migrants. They are two sons of the Southeast, same with the South South. So we are the true Nigerians. And we say to salvage this country, we need to take a bold step. And we have to create a, an alliance. And that alliance we call the Southern and Middle Belt Alliance. There, our global chairperson is a Middle Belter. Very highly responsible and somebody who understands our plight from Southern Kaduna, Olwai, or Yusuf. He is in the UK. He chaired the formation of this particular alliance. And great Nigerians like Dan Olumba, Mazi Izoke, Ambrose Wangpan Jr., Osuchi, Felix, Okoye, Comrade Captain Kashmir, Marcel, and many other great Nigerians felt that to salvage this country, you don't need the multitude of 200 million Nigerians, but you need few Nigerians with the right attitude, with the right drive to make a change. And we said, let's start by forming this alliance as a starting point. We as middle belters, or as the middle uh, as the Samba organization, we realize that our elders are having a kind of a cross the Niger handshake. And there is what we call the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum. Cheered by Baba Edwin Clark. And we are represented in the middle belt by one distinguished son of the soil, a middle belter by excellence, a fearless gentleman. And to the glory of God, he is here present, Baba Beatrice Pogo. Please can we give him a round of applause?
He meets other great middle belters to this middle belt, this southern and middle belt leaders forum. And we have my daddy, Dara Jonah David Jan, and other distinguished sons of the middle belt in that particular forum. And we thought that at their level, they make proclamations and declarations. But we need to op operationalize these declarations. Therefore, the Samba will become the operational or the youthful arm of putting into reality what they declared as our fathers, as our leader, and the people who have defined a trajectory for our tomorrow. Secondly, as a strategy, we decided to follow the footstep because we are equally convinced with the decisions of our leaders, the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum. They took a position that for 2023, the presidency of this country should go to southern Nigeria. And in same footing, we in Samba decided to adopt that because we are convinced that is the right thing and that is the right way to go. Therefore, it was no surprising that Samba had been in the forefront of newspaper news or newspaper newspaper uh, news commentaries when we are challenging whoever regardless of status regardless of class that is against the southern presidency so our second adoption is that the next president should come to the south thirdly has samba we do not just adopt what in statements that the southern pre that we should have a southern president, we institute a search and profiling team. At that point, we were convinced that the next president is likely to be a product of the APC or the PDP because they are the dominant political party. So, in our searchlight, we finally came to terms that. For the PDP, we are adopting Peter Obi as the PDP person we are going to mobilize for. For the APC, we adopted the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Yemi Osibanjo SAN, as our candidate for the APC. And for the smaller parties, <clears throat> We decided to go with Kingsley Morgan. We quickly instituted our machineries to work for them from all these parties. The fourth strategy, before I talked about the fourth strategy, all those people that we pin as fate will have it, only one of them secured the ticket of a standard bearer of a political party. So wherever he is, in PDP, LP, whatever, since they were profiled, the three of them, the choice was made easy for Samba. So we decided to go with Peter Obi because he finally secured the standard bearer. Our fourth strategy was to undertake massive mobilization. And this conference, is just one of the many strategic moves that we have laid out. And this conference, we target the Middle Belt Save Nigeria Conference. The reason is simple. The Middle Belt is a region in Nigeria that offers 
not less than 230 ethnic nationalities living within this belt. The size is approximately 300,000 square kilometers, and our population is approximately a quarter of the Nigerian population. Therefore, the Middle Belt is not only the most fertile farmland you have in Nigeria, it has the most abundant natural resources than anywhere in Nigeria. Talking about a new Nigeria, somebody took a bold step and chose not to be part of the auction to get the standard bearer of a party, which became a tradition in the APC, PDP, and other political parties. But somebody took a bold step and said he is changing the narration. That person is Mr. Peter Obi. He chose, out of all odds, to plant a seed of a new political movement. He watered this particular movement with a renewed consciousness by his credentials and by his slogan that we should rise up and take back our country. Again, he plowed the political, he plowed the political landscape on blemished record of self-attainment. If it is for him, it's good enough to go. But he decided to plow into our minds a new political consciousness. And then we can see it by his unblemished record of self attainment Not only that, he decided to water the possibility by telling us that efficient government service delivery is possible. He did that in a number of states. Of course, when you plant a seed, you till it, you water it effectively. What do you expect? The seed germinates. And today, that seed is everyone here, and we are called obedience. So the seed obediently arrives. It didn't stop there. It decided to weed that particular tree that particular seed, that particular land, to ensure that he create a roadmap. He is not here for just being president. His roadmap is to take us away from consumption to production. He then finally fertilized. He fertilized the seed by bringing another Nigerian who have proven that he believes in a nation that works. He now fertilized by injecting Senator Ruby, Senator Dati into the ticket. And today, today, this political movement, this seed has grown and is solid like the oak tree. And all of us here have no choice but to be obediently useful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my job is to welcome you. You are all welcome. Middle Belt matters. Mattered before. It is still in the business of matter, having business to matter about the current state in Nigeria. And the middle belt 
matters in defining the future. Let's do what is needful. Let's do what is right. And then get back our country. Thank you very much. Please, another round of applause. To the man wearing two hats today is Honorable Thompson Dagat. He's a chairman of the local organizing committee of this conference, the Middle Belt Save Nigeria Conference. He is also the national coordinator of the Southern and Middle Belt Alliance, known as Samba. Please another round of applause for him. Aide, he said a couple of profound things reinforcing certain truths about the Middle Belt, more than 300, about 300 ethnic nationalities in terms of land mass, about a quarter of the country, which is the size of so many European countries. And in terms of resources, about the richest in abundant resources, be it material, human, natural, we have them all. We should be proud of the Middle Belt. Would like to quickly recognize the presence of the representative of His Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi, and the person of Mrs. Dudu Manuga. She is the National Women Leader. I'm sure we all saw her, but we will see her again. We also have with us the state coordinators of the yes, the movement. Many call it the obedient movement. The Peter Obi Support Network, also known as POSN. So as we call the coordinators, if you've not already been ushered to your seats, kindly move forward to the front row, to your extreme right. There are a couple of tables reserved for you if you are a state coordinator of the Peter B Support Movement. So the first name we have is Ismaila Saba Fahu, the coordinator for Niger State. And Aide will tell us, we'll call the other names. Thank you. The coordinator from Nassau State, the person of Mr. Moses Joseph Auza. Mr. Moses Joseph Auza. Bauchi State, Jonathan Simon Temako, JP. The FCT, Aaron. Bawa Vianilo. Hope I got that right. Plateau State, Michael Mishé. Ogi State, Abel A. Peter. Coordinator from Benue State, Azwana Jaffet. The coordinator from Huara State, in the person of uh, Mr. Aloysius Nwara, is represented by Namo Philip. Before we get into the next item on the agenda, which is the journey of Samba so far, Samba, standing for the Southern and Middle Belt Alliance, would like to quickly recognize a couple more names. There's a lovely lady in uh, a black pair of pants and a lovely blouse. Anytime we see her, we know we probably have a few more dignitaries to recognize or some input from the organizers. So we have with us Crown Prince Lance Emmanuel, the co coordinator, real local government area coordinator of the Take Back Nigeria program. 
We also have Elder Danjuma Kuyembo, former director FCTA, who is an FCT stakeholder. There he is. You will forgive us, uh, most of the names are handwritten and there are lots of acronyms, so we just might run through the acronyms the way they are uh, for the sake of time. We also have with us today Chief James Shadjul, uh, Board of Trustee Member of the Middle Belt Forum, FCT Chapter. A round of applause for him, please. There he is in the second row. We have, he is, I beg your pardon, also, that's Chief James Shadjul, is also the Chief of Lantan Tarok FCT. I'm sorry, that's how it's written. I hope it's correct. Please, another round of applause for him. Thank you very much. We have with us Comrade Aaron Bauer Vianiro, the FCT coordinator of the Northern Ethnic Minorities Movement. Do forgive us if uh, your last name is mispronounced. We have with us today Mrs. Memba Asen, Assistant Secretary of NEMM, the FCT chapter. A round of applause for her, please. We have quite a number of individuals from the FCT today. This is such an honor to have you. Mr. Samuel Dada, the Financial Secretary, FCT of the NEMM as well. Just stood up for recognition. We'll probably run through a few more names, then we get back to the program and we'll take more names, more recognitions as the program progresses. We have with us a dear brother and friend and someone whose voice many times we say looks bigger or is bigger than he actually looks. He is a stare positively. Uh, the, I'm speaking of none other than Barrister Gyanzi. He is the Labour Party senatorial candidate for Plateau North. You see what I mean? If you've heard his antecedents, you will imagine he's a giant. But, you know, gigantism is in, in your impact, not necessarily your physical size. We also have with us today Reverend Amos Damo, the uh, Koki National Youth Coordinator. That's a huge movement, a huge movement. I'm sure if we ask him about numbers, he'll tell us they're in hundreds of thousands, if not millions, because I've actually engaged with some of the youth groups under Cooking Church. Then we also have Mrs. Anne Wong, the leader of women of like-minded. So while well, we're taking the names as we see them, we do not want to make assumptions because we know there's so many movements out there so we respect uh, how they are represented. Please, a round of applause to everyone who is here this morning as we proceed with other items on the program. Are you there? At this uh, point in time, we're going to take uh, a representative of uh, Samba, and they're going to be sharing with us the journey so far. I would like to invite Mr. Ram Pam, Junior. Please give him a round of applause as he comes up. I remain Ron Palm Jr. And uh, Aide has always been a blessing. You remember, come, oh, let's praise the Lord of praising the Lord of Lord Jehovah. That's the same voice. So it's a pleasure having you around once again. Um, sometimes we have a house of proverb that says, uh, At this point in time, our guest, has a very important message to deliver apart from here elsewhere. 
So I'd humbly take a bow and I'll allow uh, our father, our friend, to come up first. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, a round of applause to Mr. Pam Jr., who has decided to uh, give the space to the keynote speaker to come to the podium fast. And he's, he's full of sayings and parables. That's wisdom. And leadership is adaptive, like uh, he did rightfully right. said. A leader is one who inspires and motivates others. And we're so honored to be in a room full of leaders. So, Aidy, if you can bring up the keynote speaker. Well, I believe um, he doesn't need much of an introduction. I'm sure we'll welcome him with a warm round of applause. He's the convener, Initiative for Better and Brighter Nigeria, IBDN. He's also the visionary of the El Buba Outreach Ministries International, the Prophet Isa El Buba. Please let's keep clapping until he comes to the podium. Prophet Isa El Buba, the founder of the Ebomi Ministry. We'll probably be giving him one of our mics, possibly? No, they all okay. kick. All right. Mr. Guest Speaker, sir, you're welcome. Thank you. I, I want to welcome every one of us to the heart of Nigeria which is Plateau State. Want to appreciate the sacrifice and the labor of the convener, chairman of the occasion, the president of the, of the Middle Belt Movement, a national women leader, and um, Dr. Darby, the Nigerian Labour Congress uh, leaders that are here, and I can see some of the top church leaders, some of them that are here from different states. I had to squeeze this time to honor this invitation uh, to be with us, uh, having a lot of other schedule and programs before me, but because of the content of the letter that I received when I came in to town, I had to squeeze out these few minutes to be with us to talk about the new Nigeria and the vision of the new Nigeria. But I want to appreciate the convener and the little that I've been able to hear and to listen. Now there is a story going all over the place um, when they saw the flyers and um, calls were coming in from all across the country. Um, thus, we have, by the grace of God, one of the widest spread movement in the country that is spread across the entire country uh, from state to state, local government to local government and to most of the polling units. And um, there is this question people are asking and said, okay, have you finally uh, declare who you're standing for and who you're supporting. I said, you'll get to hear from me. When the right time comes, I will do that. And it's going to be held at the Rampam Stadium. But I just want us to understand that 2023 is a precious year, a cardinal, very important year. And we chose not to be the people that will be talking or people that will be acting. The only way we can save Nigeria is to understand what vision is all about. Most of you know very much how much my life has been threatened by a particular group of people who believe that I should not say what I've been saying. And for the past few years, I've confronted injustice. I've confronted certain systems that are not right with the standing of righteousness, 
God who is the God of all. He created every one of us and planted us in this country, Nigeria. And Nigeria as a nation deserves the best and every Nigerian deserves the best treatment and care. And as a preacher of righteousness and the preacher of the gospel of Christ, I cannot stand to see anybody oppressed because of his color of skin or his tribe, language, or where he's coming from. God is the maker of all. And he has made and given us the earth to enjoy it and to use it for his own glory. So anything that will fight against the pattern of God, I will stand against it and I will never support it. Recently, I've been able to make a national broadcast that millions of people have been able to follow around the world. And I've said this, in the year 2019, I gave a support to one of the presidential candidates because it was a northern, northern affair. I've insisted from 2019 up to 2019 that 2023 presidency must go. And I said must, it must go to the south. I spoke with certain leaders, board governors, serving senators, and members of the parliament and stakeholders, and religious leaders. I traversed this country, went from the north to the south, from the south to the west, and the east, and the far northern part of Nigeria. Consulted with Islamic sheikhs, Christian clerics, and I presented to them what is needful at such a time like this. God in his own wisdom has blessed Nigeria and been able to put Nigeria together with gifted minds. And if we harness these gifted minds, then we'll be able to see the vision of Nigeria coming true. Um, I give the support because it was a northern, northern thing. And between the person I supported and I spoke publicly and gave my endorsement, it was because it was a northern affair. But this time around, I said, it must go to the south. Whatever has been done, goes to the south. But, Muslim president that will be in office for eight years. And this time around is not just about religion, but about equity and fairness. We must have a Christian president that will take over from Bohan. And so, I made a public statement a few weeks ago. And I said, Certain group of people have been reaching out to me to discuss with me, but I've stated my position. And so, number one, if you talk about PDP, remember it's not about a political party this time around, it's about the person. So we're going to be having virtually what I call Jalof Rice in 2023 election. Because what you may have in the state will be different from what is going to be at the federal level. Now, I said this and I'm going to say this. For the presidential candidate of the PTP, they're still reaching out. But I've said this openly. Number one, that is our. For the APC candidate, which is Asiwaji Tinubu, that is also out. So, I will tell us which one is the next one. Now, the Bible says, um, getting from Proverbs 29 and verse 18, where there is no vision, the future is blink. Vision is the purpose for living. Vision is the purpose for association. Whatever you do in life, you must be driven by vision. 
I have the privilege of raising up my children and um, they've done remarkable very well in school. Um, I've not been able to attend to the height they have, but I've been able to prepare them to be able to go above what I have been able to do. And um, my children came out with first class in their first degree and in masters with distinction among the best graduated student in Wisconsin University. Now, I demanded that they should come home to Nigeria after their master's program and when they got some work doing abroad. The question is, why should I ask my children to return back to Nigeria in the midst of the chaos? Because I believe in the new Nigeria. And as I'm talking to you, they did their first degree here, went for their masters, and of course, they were harvested by top industries, but they are back to Nigeria, and they are serving for the deliverance of the new Nigeria. We need to understand that what true vision is all about, and we must understand what vision is all about, or else we'll be wasting our time. I want to say this while moving on with my little lecture, that the middle belt has been the enemy of herself. And um, this time around, I'm glad that the middle belters are rising up. And I'm glad the middle belt president is physically present here. And we need to clap and celebrate this man for his commitment to see the middle belt rising up to her place of responsibility. When you talk about true vision, true vision is human calls worthy of self-sacrifice. People who are involved in redeeming the future today, they are driven by a vision. When you see somebody making the ultimate sacrifice, not about themselves, not about their pocket, not about their stomach, not about just their family, but they are making the ultimate sacrifice for the redemption of a people. You know that such people are driven by a vision. True vision is a view of the future, more, more noble than self-preservation. People have confronted me with this question around the world. With all that you've gone through, I've gone through nine assassination attempts on my life. Defending the cause of the Nigerian project. But I've not backed out and backed down. And I've not slowed down. Because I see the new Nigeria. And this, this new Nigeria is going to happen in 2023 by the grace of God. Because of the vision of the new Nigeria. I've been able to produce a film for the first time that I became an actor. Of the vision that I saw, and I'm going to ask that my children will release that film to the convener of the Save Nigeria so that you can have it freely to, to give it to everybody to watch. True vision is a view of the future, more noble than self-preservation. Visionary people are not thinking about their stomach, but the story and the structure of what is going to happen to the future generation. What the future generation can hang on. And we're having a bunch of leaders in our time and a generation that we've seen through times that are not ready to step aside to allow the younger generation take over leadership. But this time around, we're going to show to them that it is time for us to prepare our children and grandchildren to lead. I am a blessed father of seven grandchildren. And so I think about the state of my present children, my grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. True vision is destiny in pictures. They are driven by the picture that they see through visionaries. What you see determines your conviction. What you see determines your character. And that is why in such a time like this, you're not going to be driven by 
the muzzle of bread that you're going to be given. You're not going to be driven by coins. You're not going to be driven by Naira. What somebody will pay for you to be able to manipulate the election. But you're going to be driven by your conviction. And that's the reason why we're here this morning. It is because of the conviction that we have. Not for somebody to pay us for the redemption of Nigeria. But that all of us will pay the price for the redemption of a new Nigeria. I have spoken to some of the top leaders and especially in the, in the party that is going to flag and take up the candidate to put his house in order. Because when you are a visionary leader, you think about your character, the character of honesty, the character of integrity, the character that stands out to defend the truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth you know and you act upon it shall set you free. True vision is divine purpose in color. When purpose is not understood, abuse is inevitable. People abuse privileges because they lack purpose. But people die, groom some dead for the purpose that is driving them. The scriptures say to us, why did Jesus die and had to pay the prize for the redemption of and the entire humanity the bible says for this purpose the son of god was made manifest that he might destroy anything that is evil and that's why jesus came he came in order to destroy what is not right and he died for it all great leaders in the world when you check their history they are they were driven by purpose and they lay down their lives and that's why some of them were in prison some of them were shut down and gone down some of them were were humiliated and some of them were mocked at but at the end of the day the vision spoke vision can never die it doesn't matter what you do even if you kill the visionary true vision is a concept of the future more preferable than the past and the present. Abraham, our great grand ancestor, he saw with the vision, he saw the future, and then he looked at the city whose builder and maker is the Lord, and he paid the maximum price to be able to prepare the future. The past is painful to talk about, and we all know the state of what the past looks like in the present. Nigeria was not this way when I was born. The Nigeria I was born into, Naira was almost equal to a pound. Dollar was almost two dollar to one Naira. The Nigeria I was born into, before the light will be taken off, there will be an announcement. The Nigeria I was born into was a Nigeria when a uniformed man stands on the road, taxis were parked by the roadside and said, can I help you? Because of that, that they had for the men. The Nigeria I was born into was the Nigeria when every month, at the end of every month or every other month, a helicopter would be flying to, 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 to spray insecticides against mosquitoes. The Nigeria I was born into, health workers will be coming to your house every weekend to check how neat your house looks like. The Nigeria I was born into was in Nigeria, when you graduate from school, before you come out of your university job, is waiting for you with a flat, with a house. The Nigeria I was born into was in Nigeria that students in primary and secondary school were receiving scholarship from the government. You were given money. It was students that were even sustaining some of their family members. The Nigeria I was born into, you can leave the doors of your house open and come back and nothing will be tempered with. The Nigeria was born into, rarely would you find an army officer in the streets of Nigeria. When you see one, that tells you something is going wrong. The Nigeria, I was born into was the Nigeria, Muslim and Christians were sitting down together in the same place and nobody knew and, and, and differentiate between the Christian and the Muslim. I was born a Muslim, I grew a Muslim. I was one of the most respected First World War, Second World War veteran. And so we served together. But then, the Nigeria that suddenly drifted and took off out of the part 
of growth. It happened in our time because of visionless leaders. So this time around in the present, whatever happens in the past is as a result of the decisions that were made yesterday. The decisions we make today will determine what happens tomorrow. And so it's not to be mourning about the past. The past is in the grave. But the future is in our womb. What we conceive now will determine the kind of child we will give birth to tomorrow. And I can announce to you, we have in our womb a new Nigeria. And we are in the labor room and very soon we're going to give birth to this precious and glorious child called the new Nigeria. I saw the dream of the new Nigeria. God showed me this new Nigeria. And when this happened, in less than two years, Nigeria will come top in the community of nations. I have the privilege to be honored by the American Congress when I addressed the American Congress a few years ago. And also have the privilege of having access to over 180 nations. I was called upon to move over and migrate. But I said, no, I'm staying back in Nigeria. Because the end, the hope of the entire globe is going to be Nigeria. What you see now is just a transition. It is Genesis chapter 1. The earth in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and everything was perfect. But there was a disruption. And the earth was formless and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. But then a time came. That story did not last. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. We are going to see light again in Nigeria. And that's the reason why for the past over two years with all invitations around the world, I've not accepted one invitation apart from just reconciling the state of the Cameroonian government and the Ambassadonians. I refuse to fly out of the shore of Nigeria, be moving from street to street, road to road, flying from state to state, declaring the new Nigeria. So we all here, we will see the rebirth of a new Nigeria by the grace of God. So what is vision? What vision is not? Vision is not a human concussion of the future. Vision is not a conception of your private view of the future. Vision is not person, private or selfish ambition. Vision is not complicated lists of programs, even though it produces programs. Vision is not a goal, but it produces goals. Vision is not a mere physical sight, but a perception of the unseen future. Vision is not ambition, even though it inspires self-service. So, true vision is not self-promotion, but it promotes others. True vision never destroys humanity, but it builds and preserves human value and dignity. To tell you that the government of President Buhari is a government that has no vision. A government that is blood testing. They are the ones who brought in these bandits that you call bandits. They sponsored them. They, they organized them because they wanted to wipe out a They wanted to wipe out a segment of a people called the Middle Belters. It was an intentional deliberate plan. But the God of heaven who fights for the cause of the innocent, he's turning the battles. When there is no vision, what you see is people destroying humanity. Destroying the people they don't like to see their faces because of the blessing that God has given to them. Why should in any way, like I said, when, when, when a, a place of worship was destroyed in Maiduguri, I flew over to Maiduguri to, to stand with the people. Why should the people be dealt with or be, 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 be unjustly treated because of their faith? What belongs to a Muslim should be given to a Muslim. What belongs to a Christian should be given to a Christian. In my family, we have, a, we have sheikhs and we have pastors. I become a Christian in my family, but today we all sit together, we eat in the same plate. 
There is no need to fight for any God. Before Christianity, I was created for as a human being. Before my, mother, my brothers talked about Islam or my father, he was first of all made a human being. When you have the nature of God in you, you will not destroy any human being. You will rather be a builder of people and not a destroyer of people. True vision never destroys human value and human dignity. Why are we crying for the new Nigeria? We are crying for the new Nigeria because we will not allow people to come into power that will continue to destroy the Nigerian people. We need to restore the Nigerian value. And we need to bring about the human dignity. Nigerians should be able to walk on the streets of any nation with pride. True vision is generational. Why should a man? Why should a man? Why should a man that is over 80 years be struggling with his own child to become president of Nigeria? I've raised my children, been generational in thinking. I train them every month. We have board meetings. And I teach them on, on the, 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 the capacity and the system and structure to be able to take over leadership from me. It is the pride of a father to sit by the side and watch his children do better. That is why Asiwajo is disqualified. The reason why Atiko is also disqualified, if you have worked together with Peter Obi and you have seen his competence and you have said it in PDP, if they will allow the ticket to go to the South, it's you will step down. Okay, right now, why don't you step down? Because this is a younger mind. Someone who has the capacity to be able to drive the process. True vision is generational to understand the need for secession. A leader must have a vision of the future, a future that makes the leader not to have an active role, but rather to watch on the state of the people. His sons. I was expecting that Asiwaju was going to do something as if he was a visionary leader, looking at the competence of, uh, of the vice president of Nigeria. If there's one man that I have seen that has all it takes, was Osi Banjo. But the moment they saw that in him, they started clipping his wings. I thought that in leadership, when you are having a team of two people, leaders surround them with minds than themselves. They surround themselves with bright minds than themselves. If President Buhari wanted to rebuild Nigeria and get Nigeria to what he said he was going to do, Having Vice President of Subanjo, he would have empowered that young man to drive the process. But it just tells us the kind of leaders that we have. And this time around, we must change them. We must remove them. I would like you to reach out to two people and give them a high five and say, it's time to get them out of the street. We have to retire them. Every great vision, the leader makes an active, active preparation to see his sons and daughters climb up to leadership. God told a man called David, very powerful man that fought 68 wars and never lost one. And the man David told him, he said he wanted to build a temple. And God said, I'm not going to build a temple. But then to do that. What we saw as a visionary leader was that David prepared all that was required for Solomon to build the temple. That's a leader, great leader, who prepares the ground for his own, for his own children. I stand again by the word of the scriptures, a good father leave it inheritance for his children's children. It is not money in the bank account, it is vision, values and virtues. You can leave all the billions in the world for your children and if they have no vision and they have no value and they have no virtue, they will waste away all that you have labored your, all through your life. That's why we have a case of one man that lived and is dead. He was supposed to be the president of Nigeria in 1992. 
very, very wealthy man. That man was able to raise a lot of institutions, but he raised a family without a vision. MKO Abiola died, leaving behind multi-billion naira institutions, but all were squandered because of visionless children. David was a perfect example and a model of a man that has been able to lay a foundation that generation can continue to build upon. So vision is the essence of leadership. And the purpose for mentoring, for succession, is because of vision. Therefore, a visionary leader, the person that we should look for, for the new Nigeria, is a leader, is one who sees beyond his face. He sees beyond and perceives the need to incorporate others into the process of his journey. And that's why I'm glad that the Save Nigeria, the Middle Belt Forum, is pulling everybody together. And also the movement that I'm championing, bringing everybody on board because this is the time for alliances. This is the time to pull our strength and our resources together to make it happen. It's not about a person, it's not about a man, it's about a project. I wrote a letter to six governors when they were going to conduct the PDP elections or primaries. And I wrote a letter to six of them that were contested. I asked each one of them and I said, listen here. You know I have visited, I've talked to all of you. And I've told you that we in the north are standing for a southern presidency. It's time for you to pull your strength and energies together. And I said these words to them. And I said it's not about you as a person. It's about a project. And if it is a project, a man of vision will step down and not allow self to make him or her truncate a process of deliverance. So I said to them, please, because of the new Nigerian project, among the six of you will be um, Udom, um, Sam, uh, Sam Ahobwa, um, the former Senate President, I am, um, Wike, six of them, Fayoshe. I wrote six of them. And I told them from scriptures, when the children of Israel asked God and said, who will go for us? God said, Judah. Judah said, I know that this matter, this mission cannot be accomplished just by myself. He turned out to the other tribes. I said, come along with me. Let's conquer my territory. And after that, we come back to your territory. And together, we'll be able to sweep the enemy. And that's the same way if you want to conquer in life. It's not about you. It's about the vision. It's about the goal. When you have a vision in a family, there will be less argument. Your discussions will be centered, will be vision-centered. And I said to all of them, choose among six of you. And then when you get to the primaries, the remaining ones should step down. But just the common thing that you find in the middle belt, that in a village you can find 40 professors. You gather the 40 professors, they will always come to blow grammar, fight among themselves, and a project will never be done, and the village will remain the village. While you go to a community where they only have one professor, and all the remaining ones are illiterate, they will all agree with one point and then be able to drive the process. And I wrote in that later. If you don't do what I'm telling you, the ticket will go to a northerner. And exactly, it happened. So they reached out to me and said, what you said is true. I said, I told you. Organize lie will always defeat an unorganized truth. So if you want to get it right this time, it's here, then we must be organized. And I say this to both the for Congress, um, um, the, I mean, the, what's it, Labor Party, in the national, to be able to make sure that they put their house in order. It's not about any individual ego. For the glory of the future, you will pay the price and lose your self-promotion. So I want to say finally in closing, what is it that separates between genuine leader, visionary spirits, that separates leaders and statesmen who have mentoring spirit from mere politicians and managers 
who focus only on today's need and today's want. This is what separates them quickly. Number one, the politician focuses on programs. The leader focuses on vision. Number two, the politician's priority is securing the next election. The leader's priority is securing the next generation. That's what we've been having all these politicians all this while. All they've been talking about is the next election. The next election. That's why you will see a man that hardly walks. He's still thinking about going to the Senate. Because they are not thinking about the next generation. There is no generational link. A man who is generational will think about the three generations. The success of a father is not on his first generation, but on his third generation. That means that your success is not determined on how successful your children are, but how successful your grandchildren become. And it is your ability to be able to prepare and package these children that makes your vision outstanding. Number three, the politicians are occupied with promises. Promises. We will do this. We will do that. We will do this. All over the place. But the leader is preoccupied with pursuing purpose. And that's why you realize that when you have a leader, just give a leader, just give a leader an empty bucket. Come back in a few hours, you will find water in that empty bucket. Leaders don't complain about problems, but they celebrate the opportunity to have a problem. And that's what the difference between a politician and a leader. Politicians will complain to you and tell you why they are not working and why they are not succeeding. Ladies and gentlemen, can I announce to you that if the right leader is in place on the plateau, plateau is enough to be able to sustain Nigeria. You don't need, you don't need federal allocation. I've said this over and over. I have raised and I've been able to mentor several thousands of pastors across the world and in this country. And they have asked me the secret behind what God is doing with me across the nation. Because I believe as a leader that it is your ability to be able to give birth to what is not in existence. Money is hidden in, in problems. Solve a problem and money will come out. Nigeria is a land full of treasure. Wherever you find problems, you find money there. And so you realize that leaders are preoccupied with pursuing purpose. And number four, the politicians think of protecting their seat. Protecting their seat. Ah, that's why you find them fighting, killing one another because they want to protect their seat. That's why they can go and hire talks. I have said this in my national broadcast and I'm saying it to everyone here. We are also preparing ourselves. We will pray one hand. The other hand will be prepared to handle any talk. So the two hands you are clapping, they are going to work together in 2023 matter. Prayer is going to work and the other hand is going to work. Why? Because politicians are occupied. They think about protecting their seats. Ladies and gentlemen, the leader thinks about preparing a replacement to take their seat. That's a leader. Whether it's a pastor, whether it's an imam, whether it's a father. My father, I'm privileged to have a gracious father that lived on earth and has gone transited to heaven. He lived at the age of over 118 years before my father passed on to glory. And then one of the greatest things my father has done was to be able to mentor me to be a man. He mentored me to be able to be a good husband. Mentored me to be a good father. Mentored me to be a good citizen of a nation. That was the greatest asset. My father never left billions in the bank account, but he left a good name for me. I tell my children today that the name El Buba is a brand that is more than any amount of money in the world. If you want to mess up your life, use your name, cut El Buba out. Then the day you're ready to live a good life, you can carry El Buba. Leaders think about preparing a replacement 
If you ask my children and grandchildren, they will tell you that you always said this. Grandpa says this. I don't believe in tomorrow. I believe in today. Tomorrow is not in my power. It's in the hands of God. But God has given us today to decide what happens tomorrow. Whatever happens in your family or your children or your family, tomorrow is determined by the decision that you make today. We must prepare generations to replace our seat. Finally, the politician seeks power over his generation. The leader seeks to empower the next generation. That's why you realize they're doing everything. Politicians are doing everything. Everything to get the power. Can you just imagine this one, please? That during the primaries, just one day, one day, one day, one day, one day primaries, someone among the candidates gave every delegate minimum of $15,000. Actually, it was said 25, but I tried to put a moderation. $20, $1,000. To 1,800 delegates, over 1,800 delegates. You can just do your mathematics. In one day, a candidate seeking for power, not empowering the next generation, but seeking the power, spent over 28 billion, 28 billion naira in one day. You don't talk about the logistics. So put everything together, he spent over 35 billion naira in one day just to secure a ticket and the entire amount of money that ASO is looking for to be able to put infrastructure and get certain things back is less than that amount of money why would such a person not donate half of that money and say ASO we are having concern about the future generation here is 15 billion. Number two, why in all the killing, the IDPs in Zamfara, in Borno, and other places, this candidate has never taken a chopper to fly into Maiduguri to go and see the IDPs and said, All right, IDPs, I want to relocate you. Government, give me open land. I'm going to build. 5,000 housing units, one bedroom. I'm donating 5 billion. But now they are looking for your vote. They are doing everything to get the power. And we are saying, no. Perish with your money. We will defend the cause for a new Nigeria. I want to close with this word. Don't sell your background. Life is not about you. Life is about the unseen people that are still in your loins. You may be an Abraham. The right decision you make today will determine what will happen tomorrow. I want to say to the Southern Movement, Middle Belt Movement, you have my support, 1,001%. And together when I'm going to make the declaration in the next few weeks, because Plato will determine who becomes the president of Nigeria. God bless you. Thank you. One more time, a round of applause. Prophet Isa El Boba.
There are certain words you hear that you don't have to write down. A well-organized lie <laughs> will always defeat an unorganized truth. Very powerful. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Well, as we proceed, we're getting more and more dignitaries coming in. We'd like to just recognize them. More uh, coordinators. We have the Gombe State Coordinator in the person of uh, Mr. Pascal Prince. No? Yes, Paul. Oh, sorry, Pascal Prince is the Adamawa State Coordinator. Coordinator. That's right. And then we have uh, Yobe State in the person of uh, Solomon... Joshua. Joshua. Yes. Okay. And I believe the Gombe State Coordinator is actually here with us. Uh, the Gombe State Coordinator, are you seated where the other coordinators? Can you wave, please? The Gombe State Coordinator. Okay. Okay, great. He's actually even coordinating here. So that's good. All right. We'd also like to uh, inform you the program is uh, live on Facebook. Uh, on the Middle Belt Save Nigeria page. So uh, please, if you have your devices, you can uh, find it, like, follow. And share. And share. That's exactly. right. That's right. Would like to quickly recognize the presence of the National Coordinator of the Peter OB for Greater Nigeria, P-O-S-N, in the person of Reverend Dr. Ano Kuru, Alex, Dr. Alex, a round of applause for him, please. Oh, there he is, there he is, very humble man. We also have with us Mrs. Anna Butt, uh, the former director, Ministry of Education, Plateau State, and Mrs. Monica Guam, a retired civil servant. We also a round of applause for them, please. Yes. Don't hesitate. If you're let to clap, clap. Thank you very much. We also have uh, Honorable Ikenna Mbanefo, National Convener of uh, Yes, Yes, or right, yep. Youth Express Support for P2OB Support Group. That's right. <laughs> All right. We also have uh, Dr. Ambassador Dabat Nianmup, Commander Nigerian Hunters and Forest Security Services Plateau Command. Thank you for being here with us. I believe he walked in while yes. the keynote speaker was. Yes. Uh, we also have the representative, uh, okay, of the, um, this is the coordinator from Kaduna State, in the person of Moltu Daniel. All right, a round of applause. We also have evangelist Dasset Bulus Joshua. He's the chairman, Peter O.B. Emancipation Movement, uh, the True Democrats. Plateau State. TTD for short. TTD for short. A few more recognitions, then we'll get back into the program. Okay. Um, on behalf of the Plateau Youths for P2B, we have Apostle Omar Aimiu, is the State Secretary Plateau North Coordinator. I hope I got that right. Okay. Thank you for being with us. We also have, um, this is uh, the Movement for Change Worldwide, the person of Fumilayo and Jorin. Okay, thank you for being here with us. We also have Honorable Justice Pius Damulak, mm. former Chief Justice Plateau State. He's here in our midst. Thank you for A being true here. Plateau elder. And uh, Reverend Doctor, Reverend Doctor Alex. Yes, we had just uh, recognized him. That's right. And we have another one that just came in. Who would like to recognize the presence of Mishkam Thomas Shalsuk from Shendam, the former resident. I beg your pardon, president of Gudor which I believe is the Gumai Development Association, the umbrella organization of the Gumai people nationwide. Please, may we see where you are, sir? May we see you? Mishkan Thomas? Oh, great. Thank you very much. 
All right, at this point, um, we'll get back on the program. I'd like to invite again the representative uh, from Samba in the person of uh, Mr. Rang Pam Jr. Uh, to share with us the journey so far. Please encourage him with a round of applause as he comes up. Thank you. And as he makes his way up, we would like the ushers to kindly escort Justice Damulak, one of our elders on the plateau, to occupy one of the seats in the front row that has been reserved for him. And now we take the journey of Samba so far. Mr. Rangpam Jr. Thank you very Thank you. much. I would have uh, knocked myself in the head if uh, our big brother prophet Isai Buba had not spoken before I came, before I, I come up to speak. Like it still resonates, and I never thought of it. A well-organized lie will always, and it has always been with us, but we have not actually opened our eyes to see it. So when the truthful people just keep quiet and do things at random, what do you expect? No results. Samba is a southern and middle belt alliance. Please allow me to rest on all existing protocol. We are already one family here. Uh, my chairman, Pamson Chief Pamson Daggett, already done the basic intro, but I have the simple job of just listing down a few things and what Samba stands for. Southern and Middle Belt Alliance. It is an alliance of people who have not been loved, but have realized that they need to love themselves. It is an alliance of people who are frequently used and abused because they make themselves available to be used and abused in the, fu in the past. The future, however, speaks volumes. We have now realized our potency and very key for 2023 that we are the deciding zone. Frequently, uh, uh, there's a lot of confusion between central zone and middle belt. Central zone in Nigeria is six states plus Abuja. Middle belt is a movement of people and indigenous people of Nigeria. So, it is a crime to remain neutral when things concerning you are going wrong. Like my principal have said, this is the basic and the core foundation of Samba. Newton's first law of motion, an object at rest or in motion will remain in uniform motion in a consistent speed unless compelled by a force to change. And that force to us is Samba. The birth of the group was three years back, but we made ourselves public on the 16th of September, 2021. Unfortunately, barely three weeks after having a public interview with one of our mentors, late Obadiame Lafia, in that live streamed interview, an occasion like this one, but on Zoom, he repeatedly stressed that his life was under threat Barely three weeks, he died. And for us in Samba, we will not make the mistake of voluntary, voluntarily sacrificing each other. So that when one voice stands to speak for the middle belt, we will not all keep quiet and say, hmm, that is good. No, we will stand up and identify with the person. So if you want to catch him, catch all of us. May Lafia has gone to be with the Lord Almighty. May his soul rest in peace. 
but it has sprung in our hearts a thousand other me last years today. Some seated in this hall. Then the Northern Elders Forum began to speak out that power can remain in the North in perpetuity, but no, it is a crime to be quiet. Samba spoke out against that. And for each of our press statements, no less than 30 newspapers, digital and hard copy prints carried it. For each of the items I've mentioned, if you just want to check, just write Samba and put that topic. You can verify it even now in the hall. By the 21st of September, we spoke against whatever the Northern Elders Forum were talking of, having paper, uh, power and perpetuity, that it is the turn for the South, and the South is part of Nigeria, and specifically the Southwest. Sorry, the southeast. Thank you for that. And also, on the 23rd of September, September 2021, the Senate, having played around, excuse my words, with no apologies, however, played around with the issue of the electoral bill, had an opportunity to revisit it again. So Samba wrote to them, and publicly published in the newspapers that they have an opportunity to redeem themselves. The electronic transmission of electoral results is a transparency project. It should not be left even for the Senate to debate it. It is what is expected. And so we spoke about that on the 23rd of September 2021. Thank God they listened. Also, the Northern Governors Forum, I think maybe they thought they could muzzle Samba off, did the same thing by thinking, okay, let's have the, the, the North hold power in 2023. Samba spoke. You cannot and we will not support that. And first of all, define North. Are you saying North as in North, West, East, and Central? It is impossible. We are a middle belt. We are a motion. In, in the past, you have sold us a dummy and we followed you on every step you have taken. Now, the middle belt is 100% aligned with the southern part of Nigeria, south, 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 southwest, and southeast. So this publication was also on our national papers. Um, that is on the 29th, the 23rd of September, uh, 2021. As we moved on, there was a lot of skirmish prior to the 2020, uh, the elections in the state. And uh, the presidency was silent. So we thought it wise to speak because a lot of good, innocent Nigerians were killed and we didn't hear the voice of the presidency. So we wrote to the president and demanded that he arrest and try those who are sponsoring the violence in Anambra State. You can find this article um, it was on the 5th of October 2021. Buhari should arrest and try sponsors of killings in the southeast. Also, there was a call instead of our own uh, chief of justice or the judiciary to summon power and mobilize forces to protect people in Anambra State. They were calling for, specifically Malemi, calling for a state of emergency in Anambra State. <laughs> that it should be like, it is funny. But Samba said, no, we will reject, we reject Maremi's call to declare a state of emergency in Anambra State on the 6th of October, 2021. You would not cancel the elections in Anambra State. They will hold. Do your job by protecting the lives and properties of people. The Southern and Middle Belt Alliance also made it very clear that we know that 
in the, when you have every 12, there's likelihood of having a Judas. And while we are trying to work on the motion and the move for the liberation of our people, there are some of us who have not yet seen the light and will still dance at the tune of the oppressor. So, um, on the 11th of October, 2021, we made it very clear to our brothers and sisters that Middle Beltans, uh, who are still pushing for a core Northern presidency, are technically just being Northern slaves. Let us wake up. The good news is the tide has changed, and a majority of us now know that we are Middle Beltans and not Northern slaves. Thank you. The judiciary is the last hope of the common man and even the uncommon man when it comes to justice in Nigeria. We realize also that there came a time where consistently and repeatedly members of the judiciary who were not open to be used as tugist were being molested. A point in case was the case of Justice Mary Odili, whose house was ransacked with, with all reason. And everybody was denying who is responsible for it. Samba wrote that security agencies should desist from intimidating judges from the southern part of the country on the 30th of October 2021. For the Anambra state elections, we looked for people who had the people at heart people whom we had invited to the El Lumba TV network and heard their manifestos. So we inclined ourselves to Charles Soludo, professor who had regalvanized the Nigerian economic system to the central bank and uh, his uh, colleague Ozido. And by God's grace, Soludo came up on top. And after endorsing him to just make the record straight. Samba is not a backing dog or just a follower who also wrote officially to Soludo and published it on the papers that it is his opportunity to now work for the people of Anambra State like he did when he was with the banking sector. So even while we move towards 2023 and we have all the obedience in the obedient position we will maintain our neutrality to encourage the obedient government to fulfill its promises to the people. May God take us there. There was a lot of skirmish around Plateau State and a purported removal of a speaker in a very funny manner. Of course, we spoke about it and Samba demanded immediate, immediate reinstatement of uh, uh, the impeached speaker of the Plateau State House of Assembly in the persons, uh, a person of uh, Honorable uh, Abok. We wrote individually to all the members of the House of Assembly concerned as Samba. We sent them the letters to DHL and we published it on the papers that they should not temper to send Plateau into chaos because of their selfish aims to commit into such an illegality. Because the young men like you and I are tired of the continuous killing and insecurity within the middle belt, which is not publicized, not recognized, and not even paid attention to by the state or federal government, to give the government an ultimatum of three weeks to remedy the situation or face impeachment. They try to turn the tables around. Samba cannot keep quiet when injustice is done that concerns you. So we wrote to the Plateau State House as Assembly members concerned and we also published in the newspapers and uh, a, a petition uh, to this effect was on the 17th of November, 2021. Now, Samba also demanded the reinstatement of uh, Honorable Abok on the 11th of November, 2021. Position, we also petitioned uh, Governor Simon Lalong over 
the 102 communities of indigenous plateau people that have been taken over by Fulani militia and nothing has been done about it. We can't keep quiet. It is a crime to keep quiet when things are going wrong. They will keep on going wrong. This uh, was partially addressed when the governor stated that he is, uh, that is on two, in 2020, December, that he is going, he has put up a committee. As we speak, that committee has not been brought to life. And we thank God and uh, we, I recognize the contributions of our honorable brother and barrister Solomon Mantiri, who championed this course with the various community leaders that were affected. Documents are in the open public forum. You can check them out. Please let's remember to pray for our IDPs and that we have a government in 2023 that will hold them in his bosom and make something for them in Jesus name. It is uh, when we talk about the middle belt, it is not only plateau state. Uh, Samba also wrote to the government of Gombe State on the, on the 14th of January, 2022. The communities there were the Southern Gombe. They were continuously being attacked from December 2021 about seven times. And the governor did not even make a statement. The only presence of security there is when they come to dispose of corpses. It was a shame that it could happen to some people and then nobody is speaking. So when we met, because Samba is a global conglomerate covering the middle belt as shown, Gombe being part of it, Southern Gombe to be precise, we spoke and wrote to the government to that effect and it was published on the dailies and this publication was on the 14th of January, 2022. Samba also demanded the immediate release of Sukapo uh, spokesperson, Luca Benyat, that is a Southern Kaduna uh, People's Union. Uh, he was held without any um, trial and kept in custody until he began to lose his health. He could not walk again and all this while, there was silence. So Samba realized we had to talk. And we talked. And luckily, they had, the government was pushed to release uh, Luca Binyad, although the bail was a very funny one. But at least they had the voice of the people. We wish him good health and quick recovery. I would conclude by just speaking a few more, and then we stop there, because I can't say all that Samba had done within this uh, short time. There are some very strong forces in Nigeria that want to remain in power. And even while the voice of the people and uh, prosperity, posterity, equity, and justice says power shall go to the South. It is on the public domain, so it's not a shame to mention their name. Samba wrote and uh, lambasted, let me use that word, Atiku, Saraki, and Tambowa, that being parents and political leaders, they should be king makers and have no business com coming to contest elections in 2023. It is injustice from the highest level. If you, as leaders of our people, will not humble yourself and guide the people aright, what doesn't belong to you, you force yourself on it then it is not only reckless, it is greed, and you have lost your position as policymakers and leaders of the people. This was in the public domain, and we made sure that all the over 30 newspapers in print and digital media houses took this news. Uh, it was on the 29th of April, 2022, and a host of others. Our own stand had, has always been, let justice be done. Let it be equitable. Let power go to the south and specifically southeast. Once that is done, then the circle continues. By the next time it turns round, it will be the turn of the middle belt. May God help us all. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Another round of applause. For Mr. Rangpam Jr., the representative of Samba, the Southern and Middle Belt Alliance. So we'd we'll like to move things along very quickly from this point. We have quite a number of recognitions. We'll take them, we'll paste them. We also have a couple of housekeeping announcements. There's a short form, it's about A5 size, this is half the size of an A4. It's a volunteer form. It should be going round now, or if you do raise your hand, the ushers will, will come to you. And that's if you desire to volunteer as a polling officer during for Peter Obi during the presidential elections. This is coming from the Peter Obi Support Network. It's called a volunteer form for polling officer to serve as a polling officer. The representative of His Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi, is with us. She is also the women leader, national women leader of the Labour Party. We will at this point just call on her before we get into more recognitions to just give her brief goodwill message. Would like to crave her indulgence, all those who will be called forward to kindly keep the goodwill messages at two minutes or less. We will greatly appreciate that. Thank you very much, Mrs. Dudu Manuga, representative of His Excellency. There she is, graciously walking towards the podium in a lovely orange veil. She will give us a goodwill message from His Excellency. Then we will continue with the program. Mrs. Dudu Manuga, another round of applause, please. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. At this point, we can see your excellency. Yes, ma'am, you can use that. But if it's a bit faint, we'll give you... Okay, we... let's share, ma'am. Thank you very much. Um, permit me to stand on all the already established protocols so that I will not go off and off and make mistakes of putting people before others. So just permit me to say, um, I'm standing on the already established protocol, and I especially want to recognize and appreciate the organizers of this August conference, and uh, all other leaders in the house, whether spiritual leaders or secular leaders. I want to thank God for the positions in which he has placed you. I believe you are there for a time like this. Thank you. I bring you warmest um, regards from my principal, His Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi, who always likes to be called Mr. Um, he would have loved to have been here himself, but uh, I'm sure most of us know that he's out of the country at the moment. Um, he's doing some tours abroad, but he said I should come in and um, represent him because he believes that this meeting is great this meeting is one of a kind. This meeting is a timely one, and he cannot afford to have a vacuum without a representative. And so I came in this morning from Abuja. I'm sorry we came in late. We actually thought we could come in good time because we left at 6.30, but our roads are terrible. I'm trusting that very soon, Mr. Peter Obi will take care of that. It's a goodwill message, so I won't say too much. Um, we all know, like it, it was said here earlier on, he's the man who says we have to move from consumption to production, from the states coming to share what the federal has to give, to the states coming to bring in their own contribution to what will build Nigeria as a nation. He's also a man who believes, you know, as we we're coming, the driver said, wow, look at all the land, look at all the land. And I said, yes. Peter Obi says that is our oil of the north because he believes that from the land, the vast lands in the north, that is where the production is going to take place. That is where we're going to export a lot of things that will bring in 
the much needed foreign currency that will make our economy to thrive. Also from this rich and vast land that is available in the middle belt, industries are going to spring up. Because how else do we produce without industries? And when those industries spring up, our sons and our daughters are going to get employment. They will not graduate and sit at home, folding their hands and waiting for us to still feed them after we have trained them. That will change. At the same time, like he has always said, for those industries to thrive, to work, they need power. And he has already said that if given the opportunity, he will ensure that the output that we have of power moves from the 4,000 or less these days to at least 20,000 megawatts for the nation. I, will, I cannot go, you know, he has said so much, I won't go on and on, on, but let me also say that he has a soft spot for women. I cannot, I cannot go and sit down without saying that. As the governor of Anambra State, he gave women 40% of all the political appointments. His deputy governor was a woman, head of service was a woman, accountant general was a woman, chief of staff was a woman, and so many other strong positions that other states refused deliberately to give women. Peter Obi recognized that women have potential, recognized that women have a lot to offer, and he gave women those strong and sensitive positions. I know he will do that again when we give him the opportunity as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. On this note, I want to say thank you very much. And I know that um, this conference is a timely conference. This conference is for a moment like this. Actually, before I came, yes, last night I was praying. And I said, Lord, if I go, what do I say? And the Lord dropped something in my spirit. And he said, the middle belt is going to be the deciding factor in 2023. And I heard somebody say something like that earlier on. The middle belt is going to be the deciding factor. We're no longer going to be the ones waiting on, for whatever will be pushed on us. And I believe that the Labour Party has started showing that. At the time that another party said there is no competence in northern Nigerian Christians, the Labour Party, for the first time ever, for a, any major political party, they gave a female from Northern Nigerian Christians, the National Women Leader. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well said. I'm sure you'll agree with me that Mrs. Dudu is a seasoned politician. She knows her thing and she used the space very well to represent and succinctly drive home her points. Another round of applause for the National Women Leader of the Labour Party who came here as a representative of His Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi. So we'll go by a few uh, recognitions, then we immediately, Aide, I'm sure you'll be joining me, call on, we get into the endorsements. We're going to be a little bit organic with the program just so that we can move things along as quickly as we can. We appreciate your time. And we do know that you have other engagements ahead of you. So we'd like to recognize the presence of Mr. Kim Collins Pam, Mr. Kim Collins Pam, the Plateau, he's a Plateau State Chapter Coordinator of Plateau Concerned Youth for OB. We also have with us Mr. Matthew Neji and his team, thank you, uh, he is the coordinator of the Peter Obi Support Network from Kubwa, the Kubwa chapter in Abuja. You're highly welcome to Plateau, the beautiful. Yes. All right, we also have um, uh, representing uh, Mr. Kingsley Ololo, the national coordinator, uh, Watts, or that is, we are the structure for Obi and Dati 2023. He's representing the national coordinator, is the Nasarawa State coordinator in the person of Dr. Ande Sikuteb Yakubu Ali. A round of applause for him, please. A round of applause, please. We'll have more recognitions as we go along. You have one more. Well, this shows that we, we have a program that has been graced by 
quite a number of illustrious sons and daughters of the Middle Belt and the friends of the Middle Belt, as well as friends and supporters of the Peter Obi Detti movement and friends and supporters of the Southern and Middle Belt Alliance Samba. I think it will be a good time to take uh, some of the endorsements from some of the groups that are present. Uh, perhaps as I mention these groups, you can just come forward, make your endorsement and we'll go through them. Really, the meat of the program we have gone through, and so we will be rounding up in a little while. That's right. We'll start with um, the representatives of the Middle Belt community leaders. Representatives of the Middle Belt community leaders. Please, if we do call on your group, kindly, as fast as you can, come up to the podium and in a matter of a minute or two, do share your endorsement. So we have about five groups here today, and the first has been called out. If uh, we do not see you on your feet and moving forward, we'll most likely move to the next group. Oh, we know the elders take their, can't rush them, but do forgive us. We're trying to uh, manage the time in your interest too. Thank you very much, sir. Hallelujah. All protocol observed. I stand on behalf of community leaders in the middle bell of Nigeria. We, the people and community leaders of middle bell Nigeria, participated in a conference this day and resolved to present the following predicaments that engulf our community within the period of this present government. We observe the following as our common problems in the Middle Belt, insecurity. We are faced with the problem of insecurity during this administration, and it has drastically affected the growth and development of our communities. Yes, we all know the challenges we have all over the states that are middle bell. The problems of bandits, Boko Haram, headsmen clash with farmers, kidnappers, and unknown men, unknown gunmen, sorry. Their activities has drastically reduce the growth and development of these communities. Unemployment. We, the people of Middle Bell and the community leaders, cried aloud that majority of our youths are unemployed, and this has seriously affected our communities. Over 70% of our graduates are still roaming the street without any gainful employment. Most of them have gone into drunkenness, drug addicts, prostitution, you can name them. Health facilities. Inadequate or lack of funding of health facilities has affected our development and, grow and growth as a community in the Middle Belt, especially antenatal and child delivery in some common places, simple sicknesses that can be treated, there will be no any drug, there will be no any medication in all the primary health care facilities. And this has affected us seriously. Divide and rule syndrome. This government has devised a means of dividing community leaders in order to achieve their political ambition or interest or selfish policies. Political interference. We have observed with dismay that this government interfere in community matters, especially in selection of community leaders. 
therefore impose leaders and people that are not the choice of the people on the communities. This has also caused a lot of problem in the Middle Bell area. Ladies and gentlemen, because of these problems, we as community leaders in the Middle Bell have made a choice and the choice of Obidati that are coming as Messiah to take us out of these problems by the grace of God. We, the people of Middle Bell, has discovered that Obi is someone that gives listening aids to community leaders. We have also identified with his manifesto because he carries community leaders in all his programs and activities. Peter Obi is a wealth creator, and we believe that he shall transform Nigeria economically through inviting investors to build industries and technology in Nigeria. We also as a community believed and have trust in Peter Obi that his administrator will reduce cost of governance in this country, and we take him by his words. We also believe in Peter Obi that his administration shall not withhold any political rival because of his words. He always emphasized that you do not need to close the shop and follow a thief. Rather, you open the shop while you follow the thief. We have also have it on record that Peter Obi, as a former governor of Anambara State, was rated as the least indebted state in Nigeria by debt management office. In his words, he left over 75 billion naira in Anambara State government account. This is a man we can trust. We have also, we have it also on record that during his tenure, Anambara State was rated with the best road networks in Nigeria. Over 800 kilometers was constructed and rated by Federal Minister of Works and Housing. It's also on record that Peter Obi was the only governor that returned all public schools that were poorly funded to the original owners, that's the missionary, with over 600 million Nara as grand aids. We have also, we have it on record that Peter Obi was the only governor that produced over 2,000 boreholes to all pooling units and communities in his state, with 300 additional boreholes to secondary schools and primary schools in Anambara State. It is also on record that he was the only governor that achieved full accreditation to health sectors, medical institutions during his tenure. We stand with Peter Obi because he believed in justice and fairness. Ladies and gentlemen, by these achievements of Peter Obi, we as community leaders in Middle Bell, we have so agreed that Peter Obi movement shall form the government in Nigeria. And therefore, we stand by him. And this afternoon, we want to stamp, seal, and declare our unflinching support to him as the president of Nigeria come 2023. Therefore, we declare this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So help us God. Amen. Thank you so much for that endorsement. That was a solid and lengthy one. We appreciate you so much. I want to enjoin uh, the other groups, even as we bring you up, Please also do endeavor as much as you can to, you know, truncate what you're saying. I believe we all are in the same boat. Very quickly, just a few introductions. Um, I'd like to recognize the presence of Honorable Elisha Yakubu of the Labour Party here in our midst. Okay. Also, the Peter Obi Movement Plateau State Chapter 
Um, the coordinator is here in the person of Mr. Tumka Rinji Ilya. Okay. All right. We also like to recognize the presence of uh, one of the PDP um, gubernatorial aspirants in the person of Mr. Alex Ladan. You are here. A round of applause, please, for all of them. All right. So we'll go back into our um, our endorsements. I want to encourage you again, please keep it as short as you can so that we can take all of them. Also remember, well, not remember because I haven't mentioned this, um, Mr. Peter Obi has, all, has sent a response to the endorsements. So after we take all the endorsements, we'll hear his response. Right now, I'd like to invite up the representatives of the students' groups. The representatives of the students' groups. Please give a round of applause, encourage him. Good afternoon. All protocol observe. Uh, great Nigeria student, great youth of the Bidu Bell. I don't want to shout because I'm together with our elders. We're in the serious business. Uh, my name is Augustine Daladi. I'm presenting the Middle Bell Youth and the Student. I welcome everybody to this Middle Bell Safe Nigeria Conference. Uh, our predicament as a student and the youth of Middle Bell, there is a lack of funding, monitoring, and supervision in our education system. Uh, the education system in the middle bell have suffered so setback because in the recent ASU strike, what ASU are saying that they need infrastructures to the schools, some facilities, e libraries and some good uh, learning condition. But government are at the man of that. They don't care, they don't even show concern. Most of our schools are becoming a death trap for tourism. That we are not safe in the school anymore. That is why we need Peter Obi in this time. And why do we need it? Because we have, he has set record. We have seen what it is when he's a governor of Anambra State. He will try to transform the education system. Anambra is 24 out of 36 in, in terms of performing in Waika Neko. But during this time, we see it, he has become the first in terms of Waik and Neko in three consecutive times. That is why we, the youth and the student of Middle Bed, we need it in this time. There is a lack of employment of able youth in the country, and especially in the Middle Bed. The trend of unemployment begins to increase, and the labor market has grown very wide. And in this place, the students, the school are producing students, thousands of students every year, and the government refused to absorb them. This has placed students and youth uncertainty. And with this, the crime continue to develop, social versus uh, crime, halotry, and in fact, they use this youth and the student to begin their talks because they don't have any work to do. That is why we call on Pilo, Peter Obin in this time. He has done it before, and the record has been shown very clear that when he is the governor, he empowered the youth, not only empowered them, but he trained them, not only trained them, he educated them. During his tenure, there is no any robbery attack in Anambra during his tenure. I think this is the time we, the youth, need him. And again, in terms of mentorship, there is no mentorship. We need a good leader that we can copy. We need a good leader that we can follow the good step. And, and it's important for us to know, 
All the governors leave their office with a hoach of debt. But in the case of Peter Obi, his case is different. He lived of about 775 billion on the government coffers. That is the type of need we, the youth of Middlebell and the student needs. We need it in this period because in this economic downturn, in this economic holocaust, to rescue us as a youth and also the student of the middle bell. In conclusion, the youth are not absorbed in the system, and we are the leaders of tomorrow. But ladies and gentlemen, our tomorrow has never come. When are we going to absorb in the system? Since we're the pillar of any economy, but nothing has been going on. But we need him because he's a youth. He knows the cry of students and youth. He's an intellectual. He's not only a politician. He's a graduate also. And we know and we also believe he can do it better in this time. Thank you. Okay, we'll take um, the representative of the trade groups. Representative of the trade groups, please. Thank you. Please give her a round of applause as she comes forward. It has also come to my attention that um, we'll be taking a few words from our chairman. Thank you. I was expecting it's a long walk. Good afternoon, our elders, youth, women, and all in the middle world, all protocol observed. And Mrs. Florence Dashe, standing in for the like minds of trade union within the middle world. We, we the trade union, including all artisans, traders, NUT, and all other trade union within the middle belt. We have a common problem that has been engulfing our country, Nigeria, most especially within the middle belt. I appreciate when our representative was here, whom was representing the Obi, our reason why we are here, when she said, when she was coming, the road was bad. This is one of our major problems. Even when the goods are being produced from the farm or whatever it is, we know that the road network has always been a big challenge to us. Apart from that, even the materials, assuming we have Okay, now let us just take a look of where we are seated today. It's because of the artisans. Now the cost of production has become very difficult for us to meet up with. Transportation is a difficult tax. Inflation, price, on fuel scarcity, and instability of all the prices has also been another challenge on our side. Apart from that, let us take a good look at our industrialization within the country. Nigeria has not been producing anything. So what is the pride of us being traders within the country that we cannot produce, we can only consume, we can only import from the outside countries to come and trade with? What is our joy? But today, we are proud to stand on this platform today 
and then talk about our obi so that we will be able to now express obedience show strength in what we are doing because he has set a pace for us to follow he has set a pace of being obedient if we are obedient we will be able to know how to say and do and sell good items and not fake drugs not fake things not artificial goods in the market and as we do so we believe that we will be useful nigerians as he has picked up a useful uh, deputy we thank god for everything and one thing we want us to understand is that we are all seated here today irrelevant of our religions our ethnic groups our tribes our identity we are all one in the in the industry you don't consider somebody because he is from this ethnicity or he is of this religion no but we put into consideration the meaning and the usefulness of us being human beings i don't want to overflock the issue or bring in a lot of reputation about his ability to move nigeria forward so we pray that we we'll continue to be obedient nigerians in this movement of our obediency and usefulness so that we will be able to stand peter obi and yusuf dati as our leaders tomorrow so that the threat in nigeria will not only be within the state local government or villages but we shall become a national traders in nigeria and the nation worldwide thank you and god bless you all thank you so much thank you so much we have um, five groups all together and so we've taken three we have just two more we have uh, let's have the representative for the political action groups the political action groups and what I'll do so that we, in case we have a very long walk, I'll just uh, prep you. The last group is the representative of the religious groups. So can we have uh, political action groups? Okay. Love the way you are coming, sir. Full of action. So I'll just ask uh, the representative for the religious groups to prepare, get ready, and you'll come up immediately. He's done. Thank you. Thank you. That is because we are all obedience. Um, good afternoon, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Because of time, I would like to let you know that um, we, the Southern and Middle Belt Alliance, Simba slash POSN, have endorsed His Excellency Peter Obi. And because of time again, a lot of uh, uh, people who have addressed us have touched most of the things we have written down. So I will go to why. Because in that why, we have not heard why. So we are going to start from why. So why we endorse Peter Obi one is... Um, he has shown from his track record that he is competent and ready to work for Nigerian good. Two, he is a unified and as humble as they come. He is impentic and that he is the foundation of good leadership. He understands the problem of Nigerian, his ability to delegate shows a confidence, a show confident man who is ready to lead the people. He, he has the character, credibility. He is a man who is not corrupt, prom. He is a man who is ready to take Nigeria away from consumption to production. 
which in turn will rise our GDP and life standard of Nigeria. We, the people of the southern and middle belt region of Nigeria, wish to endorse His Excellency Peter Obi for presidency of Nigeria. May God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. All right, let's have the representative of the religious groups. Thank you, sir. I like these last two groups, very obedient. Pun intended. <laughs> Permit me to stand on the already established protocol. My name is Aminchi Adamu. Standing on the shoulders of all religious leaders in the Middle Belt of Nigeria. I'm a Wajaman from Gombe State, and the weather here is supposed to make me shiver very badly. However, I'm standing with the heat of pain boiling in my heart. Because we are afraid. We are afraid to go to our places of worship. We are afraid of being attacked. We are afraid that our places of worship will be destroyed. However, we find ourselves in an institution, in a country whose constitution of us freedom of belief, freedom of worship, and freedom of religion. However, we find ourselves being molested. We find ourselves being abused. And we find several leaders, instead of working to unite, they find ways and means to instigate divisions among religious lines. We stand to lament the fact that we lack religious, we, we lack leaders rather, with integrity and desire, the political will to ensure the unity of all people who believe in a God in this nation. We know that good leaders are supposed to protect the faith and work towards uniting of all religious institutions as backed up by the constitution however we also lament the inequality and favoritism we experience while seeking to secure admission seeking to secure employment and of course while political uh, appointments are being made we as religious leaders have been called and commissioned by god to pray and to teach our leaders to be good followers of this nation. That is not all though. We are also mandated by heaven to correct the wrongs going on in the nation. I therefore stand on the shoulders of all religious leaders, both Christians and Muslims in the Middle Belt, today to say enough is enough to anti-religious preaching and practices. We say no to religious inequalities. We say no to attack on worshippers and places of worship. We desire and look forward to a nation where Christians and Muslims will coexist as one. We look toward a time when Muslims and Christians will share same goal, same opportunities when seeking for admission, seeking for employment in any government institution. We look forward to a government who will perhaps put up ministry for religious affairs. A government who will encourage and ensure interreligious dialogue. We look forward to a government, first, with a desire, political will and capacity to deal with, sincerely and decisively, all religious issues in this country. Who will make it a duty to protect the faith of all Christians and Muslims across the nation. We look forward to a government who will ensure worshippers and places of worship are sincerely protected. As Christians and Muslims, the holy books have pointed to us that God always uses people. He sends prophets 
to achieve or to, to bring about change that he desires. And in a time like this, we see God sending us a prophet, a man whose track record have shown that he's a man of integrity. If you doubt any facts about this prophet that God has given us, go and verify. Thank you. I will not want to bore you with all the details about this prophet, which we all know. He's no other person, but his excellency, Chief Peter Obi, and his running mate, Senator Yusuf Dati. It is with these views in mind that we stand as religious leaders in this country to endorse the candidacy of his excellency, Chief Peter Obi, and his running mate, Senator Yusuf Dati. So if you are here today, under the sound of my voice, or perhaps watching or listening via any electronic media, I want to challenge you. I want to give you an assignment. Or perhaps a suggestion, as you may consider best. That is, if you, along with us, desire a rebirth of a new nation. On that fateful day, come February 2023, vote no other person but Peter will be. Number two, make it a point of duty to ensure all those you know vote no other person but Peter will be. Thirdly, even those you don't know, even those you may consider as enemies, help them to endorse the candidacy of Peter Obi. Then by the grace of God, we shall meet in Eagle Square on the 29th of May, 2023, to swear in our president. Until then, remain obedient and totally useful. Thank you so much. That was the last of the endorsements. Uh, say what you will, religious or not, political or not. I don't think there has ever been a time in Nigeria's history where we have had a presidential candidate that stands out from the others strictly based on competence. It has never happened. Never happened. I believe uh, you guys are ready with the responses. Or with the response, yeah? All right, so let's take the response to the endorsements. I thank all of you sincerely for the sacrifice of gathering here for our dear country. And sincerely apologize for my not being physically present with you. I've listened to your deliberations. I've listened to your communication. I thank you most sincerely for your trust and I assure you that together, working with you, we will build a better Nigeria for all of us. Next year's election, as always we tell you, must not be based on tribe, religion, connection, or all those biases that we use in the past must both be of character, competence, capability, and commitment to start building a better Nigeria. I thank you most sincerely for your trust. And I assure you that together we will build a better Nigeria. Mr. Peter will be speaking from Germany, where he is at the moment. That's right. And that was his response to the endorsements. So at this point, we'd like to quickly call on the last speaker before the very last, who is the chairman. We'd like to call on Mr. Devo Daliop Gamzo, President, National Association of Riyom, LGA Origin of Traditional Ruling Council, Joss, of Plateau. Okay, so it's not written here, but it's noted. So, sir, we would, um, a minute, 60 seconds. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good day. Happy for the privilege, and thank you for having me. Well, I hereby 
stood on behalf of I and my family and all my colleagues and my followers and those who have convinced now and way forward, I am family of Peter Obi. Why I supported Peter Obi here, the reality is one thing. This present government, the system is not working. Judiciary, zero. Security, zero. Academics, zero. Healthcare, zero. So where are we going? No water, no light. So please, we should make sure we stand on behalf of Peter Obi. Even you people that are seated here, you haven't hurry to go back home because of what? Insecurity. Thank you. Please, another round of applause for keeping it really short. It makes a lot of sense to stick to what we say, right? So, well, we're meeting the gentleman for the first time, but we respect him for keeping to the time. Okay, so at this point, we would invite the chairman of today's occasion in the person of Comrade Enladi Bako, the former Gombe State chapter. Okay, he wants to speak from, it's fine, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, everybody has spoken, but my leader, the man under which we convene this conference, we do not hear him talk, even greet us. May I request my leader, the president, Middle Belt Association, please to come forward. Give him a round of applause, please. Dr. Poku, it is under the umbrella of Middle Belt we are here. There's no way you will come in here in this important hall and you refuse to talk and allow you to go out without anybody challenging you. Go up. Give him the microphone, please, before I say my last one. military parlance, they would say good morning this afternoon. Uh, the good thing about this group is they took over from us a liability which we couldn't carry. And I thank you for it. When my predecessor was the president of the forum, we changed the nomenclature from chairman to president. That was late Balatakaya. And it was that time when I was also the secretary of intergovernmental and political affairs that we reached out to our southern brothers to say, if we unite, we can resolve the problems of Nigeria. And that was 2017. And when this group came up, they came, and that time I was the president, they came and said, one new group has been born called Middle Belt and Southern Alliance. Now, why are we having these groups? I said, the more the merrier. There are things we cannot do which they will do for us. And for certain, you are doing a good job. Congratulations. So without protocols, I started. So let me now go back to where I should have started. Now, many of us don't even understand the concept of the Middle Belt. I'm from Chibok in Borno State. Somebody will say, hey, what brings Chibok into this thing? Now, but if you look at what the Willings Commission was, at, I mean, attempted to do between 1958 and 59, when the British realized that in the North, there are nationalities that are neither House of Fulani nor Karun Kanuri. And when they came, they had to negotiate these nationalities into the Northern Protectorate. We are the ones that have become the Middle Belters. So anytime somebody asks you, who are Middle Belters? They are those independent nationalities of the House of Fulani and the Caliphate of Borno, when the British came to Nigeria. 
because the British came to my nationality in 1902 before they went to the Canuries. So I'm a middle belter. So irrespective of whether you are Muslim, you are Christian, you are uh, a, a traditional worshiper, you are from KB, from Southern Kaduna, from Southern Borno, Gombe, etc., you were independent of the caliphate and you were independent of the sultaness of Borno, so you are a middle belter. Now, uh, the journey to where we are now started through this alliance, which we, uh, we cherish. Uh, we look in 19, uh, 2019, remember, just as uh, El Buba said, we all supported PDP because it was the tenor of the North. And why PDP? Not because of Atiku, but because we thought the APC was not doing a good job at the national level. People were being killed, and in some cases we suspect even the security officer, I mean uh, machinery, of the country was being used. For example, the killings in 2018 on the plateau where armored personnel carriers were used, we know the security apparatus was involved. But the thing is, if Buhari didn't do a good job, we need to solve the problem. Because he made statements in 2014 which lay credence to what we did. And some of such statements include that Jonathan was killing his brothers in the bushes. You can go and Google, you will find it. Now, if a northerner will make that, a state, that kind of statement, the only thing to do to solve our problem is to take the presidency to the south. So that nobody will think that the people killing people in the bushes are his brothers. A criminal is a criminal whether he's from the north or he's from the south. So, in the Middle Belt, we didn't just support people coming from the south in this, I mean, the 2023 election because we love them. No, it is because we love ourselves. So if you are supporting Peter Obi, you are doing so because you love yourselves. So, and the Middle Belt is central to his emergence. That's what some of us don't know. We told, you know, when the southerner said, yes, you said to the South. You didn't say to Southeast. I said, yes. We didn't say to Southeast. It is the business of Southerners to decide where it should go. So they said the right place it should go is Southeast. So we said we concur. So we told the Southeasterners that select the best you have. We will support him. They came back to us. They said what we have realized in this, uh, what would happen in the primaries is none of our candidates can win. So we told them to select the best and move him to another platform. We will support him. That's how Peter Obi emerged. So we gave birth to what we are doing. The support to Peter Obi started from the Middle Belt. And we are supposed to be the champions of this thing. We have not come out as social cultural groups to declare but the time is coming, just as El Buba said, that he is going to make his declaration at the stadium. A time will come when all of us will gather and make it clear to Nigerians that this is the man we are going to support. May God take us to that time. And I believe it is doable. Any skeptic out there who think it is not doable should jettison his belief and know that it is doable. We can do it. We have the numbers, and we thank God the electoral law now says will ensure that one vote, one person, and it will be counted. God bless Nigeria. We will rebirth a new Nigeria. May I again say thank you, uh, Southern and Middle Belt Forum, for organizing this occasion. And we believe it go down. It will go down in history that, yes, such a thing which has never been done has been done today, and you will be remembered for it. Remain blessed. Before I allow my leader to leave,
I want to say he has concluded the meeting today. Clap for him, please. And that is the closing remark that I'm supposed to give you. I've given it. In addition, I want to take this singular opportunity to thank the Middle Belt Forum in principle for the support you gave us when we were attacked in Gombe State. More than 11 communities were attacked and people were killed. Mobile police were sent. Soldiers were sent. They were there seeing a flying man killing an indigenous. They couldn't do anything. Nobody gave us support except Middle Belt. On behalf of my community and many other communities around, we want to thank you, Middle Belt. Allah Yarayaku. Allah Temekeku. Allah Gara Magakarfi. That is to me. Do support in the Kukaber Monsamu. Kuma, our pride today in terms of defending ourselves is made with bad. So we thank you. I wish you well. In that, be Allah, I will get a love here. Thank you very much, sirs. And we'll hear the voice of one more person. Okay. Okay, so it is, it is believed that um, the chairman and the leader of the Middle Belt Forum have basically brought the program to a close, except for a few housekeeping announcements that we have uh, and recognition of the group that coordinated the program, which is also known as the LOC, the Local Organizing Committee. The communique is going to be printed out, it will be distributed to all that are present here. So you would look out for additional communication from the organizers of the program. I'm sure a lot of us here actually did register, so your details are available. But if you do have any further questions, you have clarity issues, the ushers are positioned in different parts of the hall, the organizers are still here, right after the program, you can meet them and um, put your inquiries forward. The dates for the Million Man March and prayer walk for Peter Obi and Detti will be announced soon. Uh, the, the, the message here says we'll need everyone to come out on that day to show our strength and our resolve. I'm reading verbatim towards this movement. Pay attention to the social media handles of Samba and of the Middle Belt Forum for the announcement of the day and time for the Million Man March and Prayer Walk for Peter Obi and Detti. So do we get into recognizing the brilliant minds behind this occasion? So very quickly, the Middle Belt Save Nigeria Conference, the local organizing committee. I would like to uh, recognize the chairman and please do just give them a round of applause. National coordinator Samba, the person of Honorable Pamson Dagiat. Also, uh, Labour Party, Labour Party 2023 Deputy Governor Candidate Plateau State in the person of Engineer Jack Doom. A round of applause for him, please. Also, Labour Party National Deputy Chair North Central Comrade Ladi Ilya. Chairman Labour Party um, TUC, TUC <laughs> Political Commission, Dr. Johanna Badung. Also like to recognize another member of the local organizing committee, Pastor Ishaya Inua Durkwa, pastor with the God Life Ministries here in Jos. Also Honorable Michael Nshe, Plateau State Coordinator, POSN. I'd like to recognize uh, Comrade Ibrahim Sawa, CEO, Print World and member, Printers Association of Nigeria. Comrade Ramejo L. 
Ramnan, former National Director, Action and Mobilization, NANS, and finally the Secretary, Barrister Salome David, Plateau State Secretary, POSN. Thank you very much, Ahide. And we, we actually had prepared an apology to a number of dignitaries here, a number of you whom we would have loved to give the opportunity to say goodwill messages, but we're considering the time as well. And we believe in hindsight that most of the individuals who took to the stand today to speak echoed your views, your thoughts, and your opinions. So we will not be able to go around the room to have everybody come give their goodwill messages, but your being here is goodwill enough for this movement. Would like to recognize the presence of one of our hosts or chief hosts as it were this is biram land so the national actually global president of the biram educational and cultural organization and the person of Gyang, dara gyang dudu Daliop is here our apologies sir we are just uh, realizing that you have been in the hall thank you for hosting this program thank you very much So at this point, we would like to call on Mr. Juan, Philip Juan of Save the Middle Belt to give us the vote of thanks. After which we shall all be on our feet for the national anthem, the first stanza, and the second stanza will be read, will be sung, will be led by Ahide. Okay, he's, he's gallant, gallantly, not just walking, but running towards the stage. Mr. Philip Juan of the Save the Middle Belt movement for the vote of thanks. Your Excellency, um, on behalf of the Southern and Middle Belt Alliance, Samba, our partners, the Peter Obi Support Network, and other support organizations, the Save Middle Bell Nigeria platform, we want to appreciate you all for gracing this occasion. And it's my belief that the Lord will take each and every one of us back to our various destinations in peace, in Jesus' name. I want to specially recognize our father, the leader of the Middle Bell Forum, our elder. Dr. Beatrice Pogo, our father here, former governorship uh, aspirant. He was here earlier. I've seen some, a lot of our leaders here. You're all specially recognized. And I believe that the next project or program that we'll be holding next year will be under our able vibrant president peter obi by this time next year you'll be in office by the special grace of god thank you for your support the lord bless you all. thank you very much shall we please have the national anthem can we all be on our feet please thank you Should we sing it? Okay, Aide, can you do us the honors? Arise, O oh compatriots, Nigeria's call obey to serve our fatherland with love and strength and faith the labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain to serve with heart 
and might. One nation bound in freedom, peace and unity. O God of creation, direct our noble cause. Guide our leaders right, and our youth the truth to know. In love and honesty to grow, and living just and true. Great lofty heights attain to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Journey mercies to your respective destinations. And I would like to be your backup singer. You should release an album just for the anthem. God bless you. Long live Plateau State. Long live Samba. Long live the Middle Belt. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Stay safe.